Perfect, perfect. Uh, again, thanks for having me today. Uh, just excited to be back here at Rutgers under Coach Shiano and his great staff and just looking forward to getting on the field with our guys for the first time and going out there and putting out a, a, a great product that uh, Rutgers alumni, Rutgers will be proud of. Right, we'll go into questions. We'll start with Richie. Hey, Coach. What's going on? Hope all is well. So, so the first thing I got for you, I know uh, you've been around campus the past couple of years with Lafayette with the summer camps and all, but what's it like to finally be back on this on the sideline for Rutgers? I couldn't write a better script. Right? This, this has been a, a dream come true to come back home, come to New Jersey, to actually be coaching at where I played at under the coach that I played for. Uh, coach Shannon has been coaching for a long time and to be able to learn from him on a daily basis has been awesome. Uh, it's just a dream come true, honestly. Appreciate it, Coach. Bobby? Jaquan, how you doing? I'm great. Yourself? <laughs> good, good. Hey, I wanted to ask you, you played for Coach. Uh, now you're coaching for him. What's been the biggest differences, and have you seen a change in him from, you know, when you played for him as a coach, now coaching for him as a coach? Uh the biggest difference, I would say, when you're when you're a player, you always want to know what's going on behind the scenes in those coaches' meetings. And now I, I get to take part in those staff meetings, and uh, it's it's been awesome, man. Just the way Coach Shiano leads this organization to see it firsthand on, on a daily, it is, it's unbelievable. Like I've been taking numerous amount of notes, just learning from Coach, and uh, the change in him that I've seen is that I guess going through the recruiting process with his sons, you got uh, Joey and then the twins being at Amherst, he's, he's experienced being a parent of a recruit. So it's, it's, it's become more personable. I feel like the relationship thing that we're really taking advantage of as a staff is, is because Coach has that, had that experience of being a parent and his kid being recruited. He's, he's been on the other side. So that's that's helped us tremendously in this recruiting process. Thanks, Coach. Chris Kowalski. Hey, Taekwon. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, you know, what's your what's your philosophy as a coach, and what are you what's your personality like as a coach? Uh, my philosophy, um, I, I want all of my guys to to be fearless. I want them to play fast, and I want them to be fearless. And that starts with knowing what to do. You have to study the playbook. You have to put in the work. And uh, secondly, I'm huge on extra work. As all you guys know, when I came to Rutgers, I wasn't a high star, high caliber player. And even playing in the National Football League, I wasn't an all pro or a pro bowler. I had to work for everything that I got. And I want to pass that down to my players. If you put in the work, it, it will pay off. But you have to put in the time, whether that's studying the playbook, uh, throwing with the quarterbacks extra, doing a rice bucket routine things, whatever it is, you have to put in the time. Like, greatness doesn't happen overnight. Thank you. Crash? Hey, Taekwon, this group of receivers, I know you haven't been on the field with them much, but there's a lot of guys who played a lot, but they haven't necessarily had a lot of success. Um, what do you see from this group and how do you have, you know, some of these guys are now juniors and seniors. How do they kind of break through at this point in their career? Uh, what's cool about this opportunity is that they all start with a fresh slate. So anything they did that happened in the past, it doesn't matter. It's, it's our job here as this new staff is to get these guys prepared and ready to, to play games, whether it's in the fall, whether it's in the spring whether it's all Big Ten or it's our regular schedule, it's our job to get them prepared, and, and that's what we're going to do. But since I've been here, they, they work very hard. They've been grinding. And the fact that they try to do what you're teaching them is all you can ask for as a coach. Chris? Yeah, just uh, having played for Greg, obviously, and, and uh, been a part of the culture that he developed the first time around, I mean, how much does that help now when it comes to recruiting? and kind of selling the program and, and the vision that you want to kind of bring back to the school and the team? Great question. And, and it, it helps tremendously because, like you said, when I was in high school, Coach Shiano shared his vision with me on what he wanted to build Rutgers to be. 
And now being here now as a coach, I get to share his new vision for Rutgers and what he wants to build it to be, whether that's speaking about competing in the Big Ten, the new facilities that are coming in the near future. And now being a coach, I find myself talking to recruits the same way Coach McNulty, Coach Shiano, Coach Susan spoke to me when I was in high school. So it's just been pretty cool. Thank you. Coach? Coach Underwood, welcome home. <laughs> Appreciate it. It looks like Coach Shiano has, uh, on the offensive side of the ball, a lot of bright minds and a lot of energy. What's it like sitting in, the, in those meetings right now? Phenomenal. First of all, our offensive coordinator, Sean Gleason, one of the most smartest people I've ever been around. And his resume speaks for itself. I mean, at Princeton, they were tearing it up. And then at Oklahoma State, he had the leader rusher in the country. Quarterback was the Big 12 what, rookie or freshman of the year, Tylen Wallace, great receiver. So the, the numbers he's put up has is, is been phenomenal. But to be working with him on a daily and the type of person he is, it's, it's even better than the type of coach he is because he, he really cares about people. And that's what's different about our Rutgers coaching staff. It's, it's genuine. It's authentic. It's, it's great people. Um, from, from the top down, Coach Shiano, Offensively, we got Coach Gleason and Coach Nuns, who was on the last staff, bringing in a guy like Augie Hoffman from St. Joe's. Then Andy Arick, he was a offensive coordinator himself at Princeton. So I get to learn from all of these guys with so much experience. It's, it's just been great. Well, we'll have the floor for some more questions. Hey, Taekwondo, it's, it's Cratch again. When I'm just curious, like, when Greg gets the job, have, have, do you expect him to call? Do you, like, <laughs> he calls? Did you talk to him in the past about, like, how does that kind of work? Uh, we, we did not speak beforehand. I was, I was working with the Miami Dolphins at the time, and truth be told, as they were going through the negotiations up here with Coach and, and Rutgers, uh, as a guy that played for him, I just was like, I hope this works out. And once he got hired, we were just ecstatic. I have a group chat. It's myself, Jason McCourty, Devin McCourty, Courtney Green, Ron Jarrell, and uh, Patrick Brown, who played with us as well before transferring. And we just all were so excited, man, so excited for Coach, so excited for the program because we know how hard he works. He's won here before, so – I know he's going to lift this program back up. And when when I did receive that call, I, I, I was ready to go. And I, I have to be, I have to give a thank you to, to Lafayette and to the Miami Dolphins for getting me prepared for this situation, this opportunity. Taekwondo, it's Bobby again. What do you think's been the most challenging part of this, um, of just introduction to it, you know, going through this, this whole process during a pandemic? Uh, so a, a lot of people say it's adversity, it's tough, it's the situation, but uh, we, we've taken the approach that we want to thrive. We don't just want to survive. So whether we get to meet recruits in person or I get to speak to them the way we're speaking now over a, a virtual Zoom or a WebEx, at the end of the day, you got to get it done. When we do get to play football, they're not going to say, oh, well, Rutgers didn't have spring ball or they had to recruit over WebEx. Like, nobody cares. You just have to get it done. So that's what we're trying to do, just find ways to be successful, whether that's recruiting, whether that's teaching our current players the playbook. And I wouldn't say it's a challenge. Uh Honestly, I, I've embraced it. Our staff has embraced it, and, and that's the way we're trying to approach things. Hey, Taekwon, a unique situation for you. You, you kind of um, played under the strength and conditioning coach who got you bigger, faster, stronger. So what's that like knowing, you know, now you're recruiting kids and they work with Jay Butler? Oh, man, it's, it's a it's an easy sell. And what's cool is that Coach Butler literally hands down the best – in the country when it comes to what he does. Best strength coach in the country. And I like the fact that he keeps the before and after pictures. So 
I, I get to show recruits before and after of myself, 154 pounds, leaving Rutgers 182 pounds. Like, that's all Coach Butler and his staff. Now, I showed a Kenny Britt and a Ray Rice, but those guys were already, they were a little bit bigger than I was coming in. But you can show the McCourty twins before and after myself, uh, a Ryan D'Imperio, how his body developed and changed. And it's, it's an easy sale. When those kids get to see those pictures and the difference from freshman year to senior year, they're like, wow, that's unbelievable. Not to mention the facility here, that, that weight room is unbelievable. Like they've done a great job with the renovations of the, the locker room and the weight room. I tell these players, man, it, it looks nothing like when I was here the first time and you guys really have it good. Like, don't take it for granted. Take one more question. Hey, it's Tuck. Come on. Um, you know, through your experiences, you know, playing, playing at Rutgers, NFL, CFL, and coaching, you know, what, what techniques are you going to bring to the table for the receivers to, you know, to, you know, basically, you know. You know. I got you. Uh, I'm glad you said that. So as I was playing, People didn't notice at the time, but when I was playing, say, in the NFL, I got to play for Jacksonville, had a guy like Tory Holt. I get to play for New England. We got Tom Brady, Wes Welker, Deion Branch, Ocho Cinco, Julian Edelman. I go to Tampa with Coach. We got Vincent Jackson, Mike Williams. Like, the, the people that I played with and the coaches that I played for, I try to take – bits and pieces from each person and develop my own style. Like That's what I like about uh, being a receiver coach. It's no right and wrong way. You just have to believe in the techniques and the philosophies that you're teaching. And uh, with my players, what I hope you're going to see is, is guys that's playing fast, playing with confidence, and just giving relentless effort. Like I, I just want them to play as hard as they can whenever they get out there on that field and just enjoy it because – that window of playing football is, as we all know, you don't get to play forever. Mm-hmm. So whether your career ends after college or ends 10 years in the NFL, just enjoy every single day and just try to get better each and every day. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Coach, for your time today. Man, appreciate you guys having me, man. Look forward to hopefully getting in person with you guys and, just getting this thing rolling, man. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious. I'm ready to go. <laughs>